Hi, this is Dave Myers with Paper Trail Financial. This is going to be a brief video regarding the use of the memo field on QuickBooks Forms. When you're reviewing your accounting records, especially when reconciling a bank or credit card account, it's not unusual to run across unfamiliar transactions. Almost all transactions in QuickBooks provide a memo field where you can leave a message to yourself or someone else who also works in the file. Sometimes these notes can end up saving hours of frustration by not having to go through paper records in order to reconcile an account. There are three basic types of memo fields in QuickBooks. They're most prevalent in the footer of sales forms. In some cases, they're part of a line item, like on a deposit, and there are two distinct memo fields on check forms. First, I'll show you some forms with the memo in the footer area. On an invoice, it's in the lower middle of the window. On a sales receipt, it's in the lower right of the window. And on estimates, the memo field is in the lower left. On a deposit form, the memo is a line item. This field will populate with a memo from the Receive Payment screen. The memo is also a line item in the Bills Against Inventory window. In the Enter Bills screen, there are two memo fields, on the check form and on the lower part of the window in the table. Each of these fields populates to different reports. And you can see that the Enter Credit Card Charges is the same, with two memo fields in the upper and lower half of the form. I'll show you a couple of types of situations where using memos would be helpful. In the Vendor Center, I'll highlight an account. In this case, there are three bills entered as well as a check, but the check amount doesn't match any of the bill amounts. I can open an open balance report and see that the memo column is blank for all transactions. When I open the check, you can see that there's no memo explaining what the payment was for or indicating if it had to do with a bill. Another example of when a memo would be useful is with a customer account. You can see that in this case we have multiple invoices and a single payment that doesn't match any of the invoiced amounts. When I drill down on the payment, we can see that it wasn't applied to any of the open invoices. The open balance report shows that no memos have been entered for any of these transactions. An example of how a memo would be used in this case would be to enter one on the payment screen. I'll just make a note regarding partial payment for one of the invoices. And now I'll go to the Record Deposit screen and select the payment from the undeposited funds account. Here you can see that the memo from the payment screen populates to the deposit. When I run the Deposit Detail report, I can modify the report and include the memo column.
and now you can see that the memo entered on the payment window has passed through to the report. Memos on a check form are a little different. There are two separate memo fields. The field on the upper portion of the form relates to the source account. For example, when writing a check for an expense, the bank account is the source account. Keep in mind that this memo field will print on the check and be visible to the recipient. The memo field in the table on the lower portion of the window is directed at the target account. In that same example, if writing a check for an expense, the expense account would be the target account. Let me show you an example of the two memo fields. I'll create a bill credit with different memos to show that they report through different accounts. In this memo field, I'll write overpayment A. And then I'll tab to the second memo field and I'll input overpayment B. Now I'll run the unpaid bills report. And I'll modify it to include the memo field. Here we can see that overpayment A, the memo left on the upper part of the form, is displayed on this report. I'll open the chart of accounts, highlight the rent account, and run a quick report. Here we can see that overpayment B from the memo on the lower half of the check form passes through to this report. Since journal entries aren't associated with a QuickBooks form, it's important to enter a memo to be able to track the purpose of the transaction. A journal entry has multiple memo fields, one for each debit and credit. The QuickBooks Premier Editions have the option of autofilling each memo line with the memo entered on the first line. Let's go to the Company menu and open the Make General Journal Entries window. In the upper table, there's a memo field for each line of the entry. I'll open the Preferences window, and in Accounting Preferences, on the Personal tab, Premier Editions give the option of autofilling the Journal Entry Memo field. I'll enter a Journal Entry. I'll enter the Bank Account, $100, and for Memo, I'll write Autofill. When I add an account on the second line, the memo automatically populates. And it will populate again when I enter an account on the third line. Adding memos when entering transactions may seem inconvenient, but they're a useful tool when you find the need to review your accounting data. This is Dave Myers with Paper Trail Financial. If you'd like to speak with me regarding day-to-day -day transactions in QuickBooks or using QuickBooks to help manage your business, please contact me at dave at papertrail-financial.com or the phone number listed here. Thanks for watching.